Good morning friends, welcome to this course on design of fixed wing UAV. I am Subramaniam Sadarla, instructor for this course and uh, here we have two, two of our TAs, Mr. Deep Parikh and uh, Mr. Salahuddin Kazi. They will be helping us in solving the assignments and whatever doubts you have, you can mail them, they will be helping you. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you for being a part of this course. So, right now we heard that registration has clicked, till, uh, clicked about 2500. Uh, now we can no more assume the students who are registered in this course have the have performed the prerequisite. So we have to redesign the course course content in such a way that even a fresh uh, a student who is out of this uh, aerospace engineering should be able to understand whatever we are going to discuss in this lectures. So let's look at what are we going to discuss in this course. So we'll start with some basic introduction. Right. The first few lectures will cover the introduction about UAVs and their classification. And then some brief anatomy of aircraft. Followed by this, we discuss about some basic aerodynamics. And then aerodynamic characteristics of wing sections. and also aerodynamic characteristics of finite wings. And we will also talk about what is aerodynamic center, which is very important for us, one of the important variable. And center of pressure and their relationship. relationship between aerodynamic center and center of pressure. So, we will also discuss about what is lift, drag, which is in fact the drag polar. And some concepts related to flight path angle. Followed by this, we will look at how to measure the velocity during flight, subsequently the standard atmosphere. These are the some of the introductory concepts that we will cover and then we will look at some of the basic uh, prerequisites of this course that relates to performance, uh, performance characteristics.
this includes study about study or analysis about level flight level flight such as uh, we'll talk about thrust requirement and power requirement and range endurance and then l by d wing loading and thrust load right so we use this concepts to figure out what should be the weight of the fuel or the battery that you would like to carry to perform a particular mission how do we get to know by understanding what is the thrust requirement of the system to pe to perform or to execute that particular mission uh, from which we can also identify since most likely we'll be uh, talking about uh, propeller driven aircraft or a uav is here right so we have to talk in terms of the power requirement right so whether which kind of propulsion system should i select the answer for me i mean the answer that i get is by performing this performance analysis right so l by d w by s yeah and we'll also look at climb performance it's where we talk about rate of climb rate of climb and angle of climb so what limits your rate of climb or what limits your angle of climb no for the design that you are going to do what are the parameter that limits your rate of climb and angle of climb so if we have to know then we have to perform this and we have to study this climb performance right so we will look at both uh, study rate of climb as well as accelerated rate of climb right and the third chapter will be uh, will be about more or like we can say analytical estimation where you talk about various stability and control derivatives of the system right so analytical estimation the main emphasis is how to design a system which is stable by itself without any add on like control system right how do you make the system which stable by itself during its flight right so if you here we start uh, we talk about static stability so start with equilibrium static stability conditions to satisfy that right. uh, and then so there are two phase two case 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 studies one is about longitudinal static stability and the second part is about lateral 
static stability. So in longitudinal static stability, you'll talk about uh, which, what should be the size of the wing, for example, or what should be the wing and tail size, right? So how far they should be a part for a stable flight, right? Again, when we say wing, tail, fuselage, and all these things in propulsion system, each carries a weight, right? So there exists a CG for this entire uh, system. Once you assemble it, you know, uh, you'll, you'll figure out a CG location, right? So where does this CG, lo CG location should be? What are the limitations of this CG travel? So, you will also look for most forward. It's like constraints on CG location, right? right. Aft CG locations. Locations for stable flight, again. So this, this all these uh, conditions are for, meant for a stable flight. And we'll also look at like how how big should be your elevator or the control surface, right? If you have if you want to control your aircraft, how big should be your elevator? Does that sizing involve the distance between wing and tail, or the CG plays any role in that sizing of this elevator? So we'll address these questions while performing this sizing of control surface. So sizing of control surface, like uh, how, how the sizing can be performed and what is the role of this CG location as well as the distance between wing and tail. When I say the distance between wing and tail, we broadly talk in terms of distance between the aerodynamic centers of these two components, right? So once we do this control surface sizing and at the same time the distances are fixed, then we need to understand what is the range of angle of attacks. Yeah, range of angle of attacks for which the aircraft can be trimmed for. So we'll look at that possible range to trim. So when we say possible range to trim, it talks about control surface deflections, possible control surface. Okay. At the same time, for lateral directional case, we'll perform vertical tail sizing, right? Which are mainly governed by means of some lateral directional uh, parameters, stability and control parameters, right? So we have to design such a way that uh, the vehicle should be able to uh, come back to its equilibrium whenever there is a disturbance in lateral directional case. Right? And then vertical tail sizing, rudder sizing. Rudder is a control surface that, that is located on this vertical tail, which is used for directional control. Right? Yeah. And then we'll uh, proceed to talk about simulation. Why do we need simulation? Right. So whatever you have designed, you have to translate since you may not be before fabrication. Right. Say so ultimately design, what is the output of this design? Working model. 
Yeah. What should be the output? Yes, you should have some physical dimensions. No, ultimately you should have a planform geometry as well as the cross-sectional properties, right? And their respective locations with each other. Right? Let us say if you have, we you have designed the wing with a with a span, with a cord, right? With a particular span and cord, and you have a tail and you have located both of them. So the output should be a geometry, right? Now whether this geometry will in reality will fly or not. Or do we need to, I mean, is there a step that is involved before flying, actual, flying the actual uh, design, right, or the prototype? We can still do, the, do that by means of simulation, right? So what do we do in simulation is like convert this physical model to mathematical domain, right? You translate to the mathematical domain and then give various inputs and see how the system behaves, right? If it have sufficient stability or whatever the disturbance that you give, does it vanish with time or increases with time, right? All these things you can analyze before actually going for fabrication. Since we will not be fabricating any design, uh, any model that we are going to design in this course, let us concentrate on simulation. Uh, we, it is worth spending some time performing the simulation as well. So what we do here is derive six stops. Uh, derive derivation you know rigid body rigid body equations of motion right so rigid body equations of motion are common but how can you simulate your design by using that rigid body equations of motion, right? So the answer is modeling external forces and moments. Whatever the shape or whatever the design that you have performed, I mean, you, you made, will reflect in terms of external forces and moments called aerodynamic forces, right? Forces and moments. I call it as aerodynamic model here, right? This aerodynamic model will go as an input, right? So to this equations of motion and you use a numerical simulation some numerical algorithm, numerical integration algorithm to solve the derived rigid body equations of motion, which are which in general are in uh, differential form, right? First order differential equations. So numerical integration and then analysis right and finally now you actually start a design design methodology we'll take one or two case studies and we'll do the entire process like without understanding the performance and stability aspects of this, we will not be able to design a configuration. Uh, if possible, we will also try to include some optimization here, right? So, but this limits the scope of this particular course. And yeah, our TS will take you to the UAV, as well, UAV laboratory here, where uh, there are few UAV models. Like, uh, and if possible, we'll also include the flight test of those models during this course. Right. Yeah.
So, you might have heard a general term called drone, and what does, how does it differ, differ from an UAV, right? We should know that. We more or less use drone and UAV for uh, uh, as a common word, right? So we need to know what is the difference between them. Drone is also an unmanned system, like, and which which is meant to perform a mission, more, more a pre-programmed mission, right? So that means it will not try, it will not be able to send whatever data that he has, it has acquired during that particular mission to the ground station unless it come, come back to its home, right? So it's like limited intelligence, limited onboard intelligence, right? It is also an unmanned flight vehicle with limited onboard intelligence and mostly designed to perform pre-programmed missions. Right. Whereas, as most of you know, the word UAV stands for unmanned aerial vehicle. An unmanned aerial vehicle. Of course, there is no onboard pilot, yes, right? So it is more controlled from the ground station or in an autonomous mode, right? But it, it can communicate. to ground station. So when there exists a communication link, you'll be able to change the mission whenever it is required, right? During the flight, it, it's like dynamic mission planning. You can actually change the mission whenever it is required. Better onboard intelligence. And then, it can also, when I say it can communicate to the ground station, it can update about the payload data as well as health, health of the system, right? And the performance of the system. So it can update details. Update details for the data acquired acquired by onboard payload as well as data related to sensors health. Uh, say health of the system. and also the performance of the system. Right? So in this course, we'll talk about this UAVs, right? So how can we classify these UAVs? There are many UAVs. Starting from 10 centimeter UAV to a 10 meter UAV, right? In terms of span. How to classify these UAVs, right? First of all, let us look at the mode of operation and how they are nomenclature, right? 
So UAVs can be broadly classified into the fixed wing based UAVs, fixed wing based. Rotary wing based. And a flapping wing based. As well as uh, combination of a Right? Combination of either of this. Fixed wing, rotary wing. Mostly a combination of fixed wing and rotary. You can say hybrid UAV, right? Okay. Flapping wing are mostly uh, also termed as ornithopters, right? So where the aerodynamics is, uh, I mean, the design is carried out by means of the aerodynamics associated with the insects, flights, and all, right? And birds, so on. So in case of rotary wings, again, there are a single rotor and multi-rotor. So there are single rotor as well as multi rotor based test bits, right? That you can develop uh, under this rotary wing UAVs. Like, so what we'll be talking about is fixed wing UAVs. So the content that we have presented here is more or less related to this fixed wing UAV. To further narrow it down, as we know, fixed wing works well in the atmosphere, right? So we'll be more more closely, uh, closely talking about an atmospheric flight vehicle. Or atmospheric flight vehicle, which in our case is an UAV design. So we'll be talking about fixed wing atmospheric UAV design. So here this classification is made uh, by means of principle of operation. Now let us look at uh, the classification based upon the size and weight at the same time the mode of operation. Let us look at the classification of these UAVs based upon their size and weight as well as their mode of operation. Right? So the, the micro UAVs, uh, there are four different classification, five different classification right? uh, in terms of dimension as well as weight of these UAVs. There are micro, mini, very small, small, medium and large. Right. Very small and mini, they are more or less, we can't, we can't exactly differentiate them. But here the micro UAVs whose weight class falls below, like uh, I mean the size is less than 10 centimeters, uh, whereas the very small will come under anything between 30 to 50 centimeters. And the small UAVs will have a span of 0.5 to 2 meters. And medium sized UAVs will be of 5 to 10 meters and the large size. UAVs are 20 to 50 meters, as high as 50 meters, right? So these are some of these UAVs which can be classified based upon this. I mean, there are a few examples for it.
and also there is a classification based upon its mode of operation. So there is a tactical and compact UAV which will be used uh, more in a dynamic sense. Uh, those are more active, rather they are used to drop the payloads and whatever the payload may be, right? It can be a warhead or anything. So the, these tactical and compact UAVs are more uh, more active in the sense, and uh, in this sense, and there is a male UAV which is which is uh, abbreviated for medium altitude long endurance UAV, and the, and the hail high altitude long endurance UAV. These two UAVs are uh, meant to perform surveillance and reconnaissance missions. Right, so the high altitude, long endurance UAV will can have a range up to 40,000 kilometers, right? And uh, a medium altitude, long endurance UAV can have a range up to yeah, similar range, but in at a lower altitude. Dear friends, we are right now near the runway of this flight laboratory of IIT Kanpur. So flight uh, laboratory is in front of me. Uh, as you can see, this is a fixed wing UAV. Uh, 1.5 meter class. The total uh, overall takeoff weight is 1.6 uh, kgs, and it was designed to have an endurance of two hours right now. So uh, let me introduce uh, our chief test pilot. Right, he is a test pilot for most of our uh, configurations. Right. Mr. Navin, and you know Mr. Deep again. He is here. So let's quickly have a flight test of this configuration. And uh, this has been designed by us, right? And see how this design behaves right now. So it's a bit windy, as you can see, the model is uh, almost waving here. Right? So let us see how this performs in the wind. Now you can zoom that wind back. A bit gusty. This way, right? Zero throttle. witness a power, power of flight so the model is gliding and is able to sustain its weight because of this gust Yeah, yeah. 